Jared Poland from NosePhoto.com, and this is your Photo News Fix. This fix is brought to you by Storyblocks, which has been an invaluable asset for us for well over 10 years at this point. 10 years! And guess where we got all the very real Nikon, Canon, and Sony press people photos from? Storyblocks. Like I said, they're very real people. Storyblocks gives you unlimited access to royalty-free photos, videos, music, sound effects, vectors, motion backgrounds, and so much more. On top of that, they've launched a Storyblocks plugin for Adobe Premiere Pro that allows you to search all of Storyblocks right from Premiere. That is such a time saver. We pretty much use something from Storyblocks in every single video that we make. In fact, here's someone cleaning their bike chain that we grabbed from Storyblocks. Riveting, I know, but it's useful. To sign up today or to learn more, head on over to storyblocks.com slash fro. First up, Canon shooters in Europe are upset that Canon Europe has announced the end of free CPS support. Now, for those who don't know, CPS stands for Canon Professional Services, and you would use it for priority repair, loaners, and a few other things, and it's always been free. Well, now they've announced three tiers of support, a silver, a gold, and of course, a platinum. Now, each tier comes with a cost and is based on how many points you have, which is determined by how much gear you have. Are you saying there's something wrong with my gear? Silver will cost you 100 euros, gold 200 euros, and platinum 350. So what do you get for your money? Well, you get priority help desk support, fast track service, free backup loaners, maintenance, and worldwide support. So why are photographers upset? Simple, because it used to be free and now it isn't. Now I have no idea why Canon made this change, but I bet in order to keep service times and quality levels up, they decided to charge which they feel would be better. Or maybe they're greedy, which I don't think they're greedy, because would you rather have a free option where repairs takes weeks or a paid option where it might take days? Oh, I, I like money. Oh, and they also lend you gear in the meantime. Now I get it, you don't want to have to pay for something that used to be free, but Canon Europe isn't the first to do this because Canon USA offers four options. A free, a silver option, a $100 gold option, a $300 platinum option, and a $1,000 cinema one. With the main difference being speed of repair, discounts, and free or paid shipping. But for now, there's still a free option which isn't there in Europe. As a working professional, I'm I'm fine with paying for what if, kind of like I do with insurance and liability. Yes, this is another fee, but if I can get priority repairs and loaners, I will pay my $300 a year. Now let's hope this doesn't come to Canada because their tiers would be like 1,250 Canadian dollars, 47,000 Canadian dollars, and the best one would clearly be 100,000 Canadian dollars. Phone call, I wonder who that could be. Hello? Ah, oh, it's Guy Carboneau with Canon Canada PR. Oh, oh you, you also accept payment via maple syrup? Okay, good to know. Bye, Guy. Next up, we have a wild rumor from Sony Alpha Rumors. Wait, wait, isn't every rumor from their website a wild one? According to the rumor site, photographers are testing out a new firmware for the A1. The rumor comes from a Weibo account that says, recently some photographers have upgraded to the latest firmware for the A1, which improves usability and AF performance and carries over some of the features of the A7R5, such as subject recognition. What I find strange is they say the firmware is being tested by the Chinese Independent Cinematographers Association. Independent and Chinese don't exactly go hand hand in hand in a communist country. Whatever do you mean? I also couldn't find information on any such independent organization. Anyway, the A1 certainly is due for an update. Now, I don't know if that update will come in the way of a firmware one or a Mark II, but it is in need. With the updated autofocus of the A7R5 being more powerful and advanced than what's in the A1 at this point, it would be who of Sony be who to pump out a major autofocus firmware update as soon as possible. The A1 isn't perfect, but then again, no camera is. But the people that own it 
run it, and make money with it day in and day out, love it. And it's generally the non-doers and people who don't own a specific camera who love to bitch about it. Now, I personally would welcome updated autofocus in the A1, preferably in the form of a firmware, over a minor updated new camera that's a Mark II. Insert podcast plug here. We're diving deeper on these stories on the next episode, which comes out on Friday. Just search for Frono's Photo Raw Talk wherever you get your podcast, or head on over to fronosphoto.com slash podcast. And finally, Canon Rumors has mentioned that they no longer expect a Canon R5 Mark II to be released in 2023. They now think it will come out in the first half of 2024, around the same time as the long-awaited R1. In the meantime, they are reporting a rumor about a possible firmware update around April that's meant to keep the R5 viable longer. Funny how we're using the term viable about a camera that's been out for less than three years, but that's the state of advancing technology in these days. They, they f it with cell phones. Nonetheless, Canon Rumors is suggesting the updated R5 firmware will include a few meaningless updates like lens breathing correction, vehicle tracking, AF mode, as well as additional tracking for more animals. Now I know that's not exactly meaningless, but not as major as these next possible updates. Removing the 30 minute record limit, pre-shooting buffer, and potentially some new features that go above and beyond anything currently in the R lineup. Now I have no idea what those might be, but pre-shooting would be huge. Now there's times where I'm looking through the viewfinder, see the action, press the shutter, only to miss the shot that I saw. Pre-shooting is going to be a huge deal. But Jared, the Nikon Z9 already does this. That's right, it already does it for JPEGs, and it's awesome. I like it. One can only assume that the R5 will be able to do this with RAW files. Now, I would classify that feature as something that's going above and beyond anything currently in the R lineup. But if there's something even bigger, I can't wait to see what it is. What do you think it is? Let me know down below. And there you have it. That's your photo news fix this time around. To check out the last fix, go ahead and click on the screen right here. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And that's where I'm going to leave it. Jared Polinfrono's photo. Dot com. See ya.